already taken the roll, I assume. Yep. Yes. And the first item is the continued review and possible action regarding guidelines, standards, and regulations, policies, and analysis, the architectural review of projects in the downtown business area, area by Community Development Director, Putnam Planning and Design. You want to start, Denny? Uh, the uh, last meeting uh, we left was uh, the downtown vision and guidelines. Uh, Mark and I just re edited, uh, fine tuned the uh, guidelines, cleaned up spellings, and so forth. There is a resolution uh, for adoption consideration tonight of those. I don't know if there's any particular issues that either Planning Commission, Common Council, or the audience have to discuss. Uh, Mark and I are here to answer any questions we possibly can answer. Uh, but uh, I would like to try to either have consideration of this resolution tonight or in some very near future so we can continue to move this process along. Again, the resolution uh, adopts the downtown vision guidelines policy. Now, this is a guidance. This is not an ordinance. This is a guidance document. It's just the recommending makes recommendations, makes recommendations on policies, guidelines for development, and so forth. It's not an ordinance, so please understand that. I don't know if there's any comments from Planning Commission or Council. If not, maybe there are members or people in the audience that would like to comment or have questions in regards to the content. May I ask one quick one, Danny? It, it, it's on page one of the, of the 12 pages, yeah. and it's a minor point, but in the uh, membership uh, A membership. Okay. Right. Sky, then we'll take it up later. We, okay. I, I just want to take care of this now. I want to get this adopted. About the yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's under the downtown overlay district. And okay. Well, Sorry. It'll be a little bit different. I, I do have a question. Uh, if, if it's a guidance document, um, and you know, obviously we have these mechanisms set up, what will be the checks and balances of the system? Um, something I mean I realize that it's guidelines I mean but how do you well this district overlay will be the ordinance that puts these into effect puts these recommendations and policies into effect okay, okay. so the C common council and the plan commission will have the check you know, opportunity uh, okay. like any yeah. other project that mm -hmm. progresses through planning commission and well they've also comes council. for the inst institution of uh, design Review committee, correct. correct. Exactly. And I think that's what would be the governing body. Okay. Well, I just for. wanted to make be that clear. Yet, yeah, to be yet appointed. I, I think what the question is, though, is that we have a series of guidelines, and, and somebody comes in with a proposal that doesn't meet the guidelines, other than saying no, from a legal standpoint, how do you back it up? Is that what you're asking? That is well, kind of what, is. and then also administration, also. I mean, there's a couple different facets to but this. But his question, there is specifics That's why in the, this. Denny's provided an ordinance yeah. which right. will put into effect the guidelines. Yeah, I, you uh, know, as policies instead of guidelines, that's where you're going. Well, these well, are, the, you know, I mean, these will be, you know, regulatory guidelines and regulatory standards that the developers have to live up to. Now, please understand, you know, this is the first attempt at a ordinance. You know, as we go along, this is going to be a dynamic document. We, you know, we may be six months, year into it, and there may, you know, by experience, we may want to make modifications. Amend it in some way. Yeah. Okay. Denny, uh, let me make sure that I, I, I think I understand between the various documents that if somebody comes to us, uh, like as Lee said, with something that just really didn't conform, and you do have specifics in the ordinance of the, uh, as, for instance, an Italian design or a coast design or coastal, um, if it does not meet any of those design standards, we you, could deny it. you would deny it. They then have the opportunity to go to the design review committee, which is yet to be formed, for an, uh, a hearing on this, and if they are denied again, they then have a third chance, which is to go to the full council. That's correct. So that's all. Um, and that's there's all an, out in there's there. an appellate, you know, procedure in there right. that they, that's you know, just, out in this. Yep. Yeah. I'm not going to be the design czar. No. Okay. Simply put, you know, well, there's that's one extra hat. Well, that, I, would have you know, to I, I don't, you know, I don't foresee don't myself. 
right. doing a lot of this. Just like, like engineering, I mean, I depend on engineering services. I'm going to depend on a consultant, right. architectural, Absolutely. landscape architecture, those types of consultants which will charge costs back. Now, as we get into it, I'd like to get into a full architectural review committee, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure I have that set up yet. But we'll try to get, I'm trying to set up a system that will serve on interim basis so we can get it in place and have regulations that we can fall back on based on this document. Right. Okay. Thank you. And the approval of this resolution then does not specifically approve the, the, the very detailed drawings that begin on no. page 48 through... No, those are case studies. Right. No, okay. no it's, it's not adopting that, those specific... Those are examples. Those are examples of how these policies and guidelines could be implemented. Right. Well, one of the things I, and we're talking about this, these guidelines. Yes. Right? One of the things I didn't see in the guidelines that maybe Mark can address is symmetry over a, uh, symmetry over a particular spans. In your example, um, every 60 feet or so or 70 feet, you have a different style moving in. So it looks like it's a series of different buildings. But I didn't see that in the guidelines where they I say every. Yeah, I think if you want to. Oh, that's, exactly that's there. Which exactly. line was that? Well, let's let's uh, it's, it's let's jump here. No, let's jump to that because there wasn't a specific. Uh, go to page. Maybe I just missed misread it or something. Yeah, if you go to page seven or twelve. Aaron A at the top. Buildings of more than uh, blank feet and width shall be divided in similar increments into smaller, excuse me, smaller increments of between blank and blank. So that's, yeah, I wasn't trying to jump to this because that was, you're reading, we are you're, jumping to it. So you're not in this book. No, I'm into, I, the, okay. I'm into the, I'm into the ordinance. We're into this already. But if uh, I, you know, I looked through, there were, there were not specific recommendations in the guideline book. At least I did not see them. But that's, yeah, it, that, that's something we need to work on, and if Mark's got recommendations tonight, then we can insert those. If you, uh, in, in the guidelines booklet, if, if you just, it, it shows up in a lot of places, but for example, if you flip to page 27, you'll see item 47 on the list of guideline design tools. A little background, the idea is that these design tools are essentially a, like a toolbox of things that it, are generally lead, going to lead to better design. Right. There's a bit of an art involved and so forth. But if you look at item 47, vertical divisions with historic references. Mm -hmm. now, I, I guess I was thinking about the um, some of the building in Stillwater and some of the building down in um, Prescott where it has some of those features, but it still looks like one large building. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if this actually gets to that differentiation. It wasn't, it wasn't clear in here that it got to that kind of a breakdown in differentiation. Or was that your, your intention? When you go to that parent A, then you go to the sub-parents one through five, it talks about stepping back or extending forward a portion of buildings, so you're breaking them. A, a vertical um, facade uh, using different textures and materials. Materials shall be drawn from a column palette. Dividing the storefronts with similar display windows and entrances. Varying the roof lines by altering dormers, step roof gables, air roof elements using arcades, awnings, window bays, arch windows, and balconies. So uh, we talk about you know some of those different elements yeah. being able to, to modify a facade of a building that provides interest for it. But here, while we were tying, that was one of the issues we had early on was the length of a building. How do we break it? And we're trying. And I was trying to come, and I didn't want to just necessarily arbitrarily pick a number, so I left it blank. But you know, typically a block is 330 feet long mm -hmm. by standard length. So if you take a quarter of that, that's approximately 80, 80 feet, yeah. 85 feet. Mm -hmm. So. You know, Which line are you? I'm, I'm, I'm on page okay. 7 of 12. Yep. Up above. Aaron A at top. That's corner to corner with no setback. Yeah. Oh, more okay. than X feet with inch. Okay. And you didn't want, you didn't put in the numbers. Well, yet. I didn't, uh, you know. So, I, you know, if you're looking at 
you know, not allowing a, a building at least a block long, then you're, you know, a good number might be 80, 85 feet, because that'd be a quarter of a block. It would look like it was. A but that would be corner to corner, right? With no setback when you say that number? Corner. I mean, is when you say a block, let's just pick well, the block it's, right it's out here. It's corner breaking corner. into smaller increments, which means it doesn't mean divide the building. It no, means I understand breaking that. it into, you know, like you go from Walnut Street to Locust Street, you have seven different buildings, right. mm -hmm. but they're all attached. Well, but does that break point, 40 feet or does that break, I mean, do you want to combine two? Allow the possibility of two storefronts of 42 feet wide, allow them to be 85 feet wide in increments, and that, that's what we're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. So my only point was that if a block's 330 feet long, uh, let's say you got setbacks for sidewalks and all that, that makes your net buildable space 360 feet, versus, or I mean 300 feet versus 330. So then you divide that by four because you have to allow for your setbacks. That was the only point I was oh, trying I to make. Okay. Yeah. It's a specific within. Yeah, and, and you're right, and I'm not saying you're not. It's just so I, you know, that number would be, you know, 75 or 80, Whatever. 85 feet. So, so well, if we were to fill in these blanks, we might see something uh, like between 45 and 75 feet, yeah. something like that. So buildings more than 100 feet in width will shall be divided into smaller increments of between um, 75 and 85 feet, so that way you don't or end up with a 150 foot long building. Bigger range, uh, bigger range. Bigger, you need a bigger range. That's why I said 45 to. Oh, so you could go narrower if you want. Yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't go. Keep them symmetrical. Mm -hmm. You yeah, comment, Mark? Well, <clears throat> one of the reasons we didn't specify that was because it's um, one of those things you would like to address as as a de design comes through. That point forty seven on the list was one way of getting at it, and if you check on page thirty five, um, the form of the building should be similarly similar to those seen traditionally. It's a lower left hand uh, paragraph on the left hand side. Yeah. A rectangular form should be dominant on commercial facades. B rectangular form should be vertically oriented, and C the new building should be visually compatible with traditional commercial buildings, meaning in the context of downtown. Now the, the spaces, as I recall. The platting of the original city, I had, I think, had 44 foot increments, lots. It's a little hard to see that as you look at the facades because they were merged and put together. But I, you know, those those numbers that you were talking about, uh, Scott, you know, in that in that range are the are generally the right number. Um, uh, the question: You want to quantify it, or you? And what we could do is take this language out and insert what's on page 35 in that section. Yeah. I, Question where you I guess I would be uneasy trying to name a specific width if the thrust of it is vertical division. And I suppose you could state a range that you said, which would be okay. Either way, I think, frankly, I think you're covered either way. I think the goal is, though, to make it, we want to have something that looks like a series of buildings, not something that looks like one great big mammoth building. When, when these areas are built up. I think that's what you're after here, isn't that's it? The thrust, yes. I'd like to ask a question about Denny and Jack. Do you want us tonight to go to fill in all of these blanks? There's only about five blanks. Oh, okay, that's but do you want us to yes. do that tonight? If we could, yes. Sure. At least. And I'd like to, if we possibly could, I'd like to try to move this to public hearing so we. And there may be specific changes. Uh, between the that now and that public hearing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to then throw off the 45 to 75 feet and see what, what do you guys think about it. Filling in those numbers. Filling is of more than six. How how wide is Tallgren Square? Mark. How, how wide is Tulgren Square? I think that's our largest building downtown, isn't it? With what? It's got to be 190 feet. It's probably two, well, maybe three buildings. Danny, do you want us to go through this resolution first? Uh, I'm try, the... try not to jump around too much, but we're in the middle of the discussion. Let's, let's right. get this one done, then we'll go back. 
Or not, not that I want to use that as a guideline, but I was just... No, but it's a reference. A little over a third of the block. Yeah, but so that's a little, a little over 100 feet. 100 feet. 100, 110. So we can say buildings of more than 100 feet will be. I'm fine with that. Okay. We always modify it later. That, I like the reference so I could see what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't. We think Telegram is about 100 feet. Yeah. And you can put in approximately, too. You don't have to be dead specific. <coughs> right. right. The smaller increments between what and what did you say? 45 and 45 and either 75 or 85. Well, that, 85. Falls, that falls into the 44 times twice. You know, yeah. 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 So 45 to 85. Yeah. Any comment, Tony? Well, I, you know, we can insert those and we get to public hearing. We can sure. revise yeah. between now and yeah. public hearing. Yeah. Well, let's have uh, an approach to go with. Would you like to go back a page? And talk yeah, yeah, let's go back yeah, to okay. six. It's only, <coughs> it's only about five. It has, a, it has a deal of building setbacks, at least. Uh, Percent of the front facade of each building, where possible, shall meet the established building facade. You know, in cases we don't necessarily want the whole building because you may want to set the entrance back, but uh, you, know, you probably want more than 50 percent of the building in most cases to be up to the front building setback. So, you're saying on Second Street or on? Well, it'd be anywhere in any, any downtown. What would encompass something that would cause, you know, like you said, entrances? What else could it be? Windows? What else could it be that would cause, you know, a, a deviation from that? Well, it'd be parking. I mean, parking. depending on the amount of parking that would be provided, surface parking would be, if you have structured parking, then that building's going to be up to the setback line. But if you don't, if you have to have surface parking, then there's, you know, that building's not always going to be able to. Okay. Okay. About two thirds, approximately, maybe 65 percent. How does that work, Mark? As far as we're talking about, you're walking down the street and you've got that curb appeal of downtown, and we're saying how much of the building should be set back from the sidewalk? Yeah, to go to the current site. Yeah, Now you've got, but you have structures along the sidewalk that give curb appeal in your design, <clears throat> right? Page, page six, discussing these two right here. And on seven, they put uh, 100 feet, 45 to 80. This, uh, here is the property line. All right. And is that 80 feet? Approximately have uh, like 45 a, to 85. In, 85. in the existing downtown, this, this, the buildings come essentially up to what is perceived to be the property. Actually, it comes up to the sidewalk. They aren't always parallel and they, they wander about. Right. In the case of this new construction, where there is there is a potential for reconstruction of some of that first street, reconfiguration of the parallel parking and a decision on how deep the sidewalk should actually be for outdoor dining or what have you that you would you know essentially say you must build the building to the property line might create a problem but in general the idea is to have some linear set of buildings to create this walkable setting with a suitable depth of sidewalk out in front. And in fact, in some cases, we don't quite have enough. So, anyway, I, I, I well, my, my point was is that are we talking about the, the whole intention here was to create that walkable space, the comfortable zone, whether it's a building that's up next to the street or it's a walkable facade, it's a walkable something that doesn't give you that 10x space between uh, across a parking lot and across a street. 
So if it's not a building that fronts the sidewalk, what are the thoughts for other structures that front the sidewalk to give you that walkable space? I think that's what you were after in your guidelines. It, it is, and, and you recall the uh, one of the examples, or the example earlier, was the right along here, the entry. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a large, yeah, you backtrack up here just a second. If we go with the 50% we're talking about there, your second street frontage doesn't make doesn't make the 50% right. minimum. Oh, there is. Unless, yeah, unless we were, there are others. We are trying to do something that continues that walkable set right. or that line. Exactly. So you don't have this 10x space. So, and exactly where I was going with this, in, in this, you know, in any design that's set back like a shopping mall, you don't have that walkable space because the, or what else, how else do you treat that space so that getting to this particular requirement, if it's 50% or is it 50% or a certain set of structures that create that walkable space? Well, there's another added dimension to that is we don't know the traffic yet. We don't know if turn lanes are going to be required. We don't know what the DOT will do there as far as, as width requirements and all that. And that skews this whole conversation until that's determined too, does it not? Uh, on this particular project, yes, but I'm thinking in general. In general, okay. In general, are, should the requirement be that 75% of your building is on the street, or is it 50% of your building and 100% of walkable space treatment, where there's other th other structures along there, they may not be buildings, but other structures that create that feel. That create a, uh, essentially a, the magnet or the, the corridor that has two interesting destinations plus some interesting things along the way. In the case of that illustration, we were showing architectural or landscape architectural features that were either a combination of stairway, sitting area, arched element, hedges, you know, a fence element, exactly. uh, all of those elements. Uh, I mean, perhaps that, I, I guess I didn't think about that language as, a, as an addition, but. And this, by the way, this is a, this is a, uh, this case, this is the earlier plan here where the, This, this plan has a series of two buildings and some fence elements that begins to set up the line at the south end. Our plan on the, the, two, the 22207 plan, uh, the demonstration plan had an element here that continued the walkway on. We had some entry elements here and some hedge or fence and sitting on them. And this is an unusual circumstance where you're trying to get enough visible surface level parking to cause these uses to be functioning. Mm -hmm. it's, it's essentially catering to the uh, a suburban mode need. And yet it's downtown, so how do you it's just visible enough, and you screen it enough with this combination of pieces. And I was looking for the language in here that said, you know, if it's 50%, it has to be frontage, and the remaining 50% has to have fencing, or it's, it feels like we're starting to get a little bit towards that in the end of this. I, well, I think, you know, I think that probably the key factor here is what we consider the front facade or the or the main frontage, that's where we want, you know, basically a significant percentage. And in that, in, you know, in the River City Center, now First Street becomes the principal frontage. Mm -hmm. I would disagree because the entrance to the city is Second Street. So that's your principal frontage. That's the- well, Then you have the building all along the Second Street then. That's totally against the concept we've discussed. Pardon? Uh, which concept? Well, this concept has been presented. The U-shaped. 
And I think that you actually have two frontages there because you have two streets you're fronting. That happens to be a big enough building that has to treat both sides. Both frontages as primary frontages. See, this, your this first is color the, retail, you're right. the February 2nd, or the 22nd <clears throat> site plan that shows some buildings, a gap, some buildings or some column elements. This is the gap at the parking lot. And those little posts, which are a little hard to see, create this, create this arch element. Now, there's nothing holy about the arch element, it, uh, other than you can see the use of these columns to help create that confining or that right. line. That describes the, language, the point, yeah. The, 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 the percentage has become a little difficult to, to agree on because it, uh, the perception, for example, of these columns and this element would be rather solid. How do you measure it? How do you measure that? That's the... Oh, well, for percentage-wise. That's the question I have. I, I wish I could just say, yeah, that's, it's, it ought to be 50%, and the balance is a, a combination of other landscape architectural elements. Maybe that's the way to do it. It's I mean, not too bad. Could we just well, simply, <laughs> instead of saying front facade, say building design elements? Because a knee wall separating the sidewalk from a, a, an outdoor cafe uh, could be part of the design element of an outdoor cafe building. And it would be acceptable because it creates that space. Because, yes, How about building, partition. Or site, building and or site design elements? Fine. Building and or site design elements mm -hmm. instead of front facade. Right. And I think that it's important here to say, in this case, this building has two fronts. Mm -hmm. You know, is the front... Yeah, I don't. I think it's hard to decide now that we're de, uh, redefining the riverside. You know that that which one is the front? I think you have to say any street frontage, rather than front. Well, it, that's the intent of. We're we're here. We're, uh, we're trying to create streetscapes. Mm -hmm. In in the case of uh, first street, it's a street, <coughs> and so is second. So there is no right. It just may be clearer if here we say streetscape facades or something like that. What percentage do we want to be on? 100%. Oh, maybe a little less than that. Yeah, a little less. But the, the archway element is interesting because it creates, although it's four pillars with the archway over the top, it does create a pseudo solid area because yeah. Yeah. it's tied together. Or continuous. You know, here's an example of that circumstance where mm -hmm. you pull off for a reason. Yep. That's about uh, 25, 24 feet deeper. And, and, and there's a little fence element and these lower trees create just enough shelter for a fountain and benches and these are essentially added shops. Right. And, and there's no harm there. But no, it looks good. That's, so, that's where the so site you, do you do your right. elements? We, yes. You do this, the, the ordinance harm by putting, by putting precise numbers in here? You say in your preamble to the city policy that it's common belief that uh, one can add restrictions and pass ordinances to improve quality, but in fact it's just the opposite. That's your own statement. And here we're about to say, well, we've got to have at least 50%. Is there some way for, a, for an ordinance to be written that would say, for instance, say the... the uh, the guidance would be 50% or 70%, whatever the number is, and then conditional use permit or PUD design would dictate. And so you could have something like that in the end. Well, uh, I, could back, I mean, you really wanted to back those two paragraphs out of the ordinance altogether and we'll go for traditional zoning. But I think you still want to protect that. I don't think you want that. traditional zoning. No, I think you still want to protect that. The whole idea is the streetscape. And I think you're after something here to create that, that streetscape. Well, let's come up with a minimum then and, and just establish a minimum where we can't get hurt. And, and, and say, like, like, like you mentioned. Right. So we mentioned that it's here's the minimum requirements other than going through special design reviews. Yeah. Well, it starts off by saying at least. Yeah. So that's the minimum. The, right. 50%? Uh, I mean, somebody comes in 50%. with 40% but has a design that actually works well. 
they can go through then the, the appeals then the, process. Des, yeah, the design review committee may say that we're in favor of this. This works. Right. So do they have some suggested guidance yeah. to start with? Yeah. yeah. Right. Would the ordinance allow that variation? If this one says at least 50 percent? Yes. Yeah. I think you I mean, can work it, something into the committee review. The committee may vary from that if certain uh, somehow gets some language <coughs> that defines <coughs> this walkable space that we're trying to create. I mean, that would have to be in the ordinance, so it's not just fuzzy. But I think I'm not familiar with everything that you're familiar with because I haven't spent all this time. But I think we could come up with something to define that well enough to give the committee some basis for varying but still ending up with where you want to be design wise mark i'm going to say 50 percent yeah. what do you think of what that, of, the, of the building or of the building, building and site or site, or site and site design oh yeah yeah as a minimum absolutely oh, adding site. Yeah. yeah do you think it should be i originally said 60 65 do you think it should be that higher number <laughs> Including site design elements, yes. I don't think you should re you should create a space for anything other than a drive-through, because mm -hmm. the walkable space is the entire length. Well, would, would, at 65 yeah. percent, we're basically two thirds of your frontage would have to have some design element. Yes. Or should we say seven? Yes. I, 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 mean, I don't think there's harm there. I mean, in the context of that illustration, no, there's no harm there at all. And that, by the way, that is thoroughly walkable and you feel enclosed. Well, in this particular case, it's probably closer to 85% of their space. Is well, you don't know that well yeah. I'm assuming the buildings are <laughs> symmetrical yeah, that, on either side. It, if you look at that and you count that as continuous, then it is 100% plus because there's some covered walkways and, and all of that. that. So I think the numbers should be higher. Because you want that. But if you continuous. start at fifty percent and you allow the design people to uh, do the rest, yeah. then it's a start, and they can decide what uh, what the other fifty percent. But isn't uh, it easier to um, to appeal to back off of a number than to appeal to somebody on their better interest to add to it? But how do you guide the people who are going to make that decision uh, by saying it's going to be sixty-five percent? Uh, by, by the suggestion of 50, they can decide what the rest is going to be. I say, it's an indentation or a uh, arch or whatever. I think... Uh, in, this, in this case, the design element covers the indentation, so you end up with a higher percentage anyhow, where your, your, your railing is in there. So the idea is if you say uh, you need to have 75 or 80 percent coverage, either design elements or building, it does mean that you preserve that walkway, and whether it's a knee wall or whether it's a little fence or whatever it is, there's still not a great big wide open space on both sides of it where you lose that. Um, but you're not leaving the... Uh, they can appeal for a smaller number. Here's, here's my suggestion. Why don't we go 70-30, and then by public hearing, Mark and I will review it, and if we got some recommendations, we'll bring those forward at that time. That's fine. That makes right. sense. Okay. And then so also... 70%. Right. And the remaining 30 percent. Do you want and to use that? Then on the corner, I'd go 50, 50, 50, or yeah, secondary for any yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. The um, I, I think 50, 50 down there, yeah, or three. Yeah. So on the, the, on, the oh. on the 70, I'm sorry, on the 70 percent one, then or design elements you're adding. Say so, you know, building or uh, site design elements or amenities. <laughs> Okay. Striking front facade. Right. Uh, corner buildings, uh, do you want to stick with the 15 feet setback? Or no, that's, I think you can be more liberal there because you may have some plaza areas. Uh, you may want to go. I'd rather see that increase because that opens up sight lines, that makes more room for a congregation, that makes, you know, for people trying to cross streets if they have to wait. Uh, it opens things up, and I'd be in favor of making that larger. Well, I, was, I was thinking 30 minimally. Yeah, I like that. Again, I'll start with that and go to the public hearing, and that can be that can be amended at that time. Oh, sorry. 30 feet from the lot line, Denny. Oh, 30 from the sidewalk. From well, again, the facade will be. We'll use a different terminology: building or. Design elements. Design elements, amenities. I'll carry over that second. 
and be 50 50 30 in those blanks. We've got one blank left on page two. <laughs> well, nine of 12. Oh, there's some more, too. I I just, uh, go back to page four, not to, not to fill in the blanks, but on page four under parent B, subsection one, as she be, be pedestrian positive experience. That's it, nine, ten, nine. Oh, yeah. Uh, this issue on. Uh, what page, I'm sorry? That was on page four. Four. B1. A parking lot expansion, not ex uh, well, this is exemption from what's covered. I was actually thinking about taking that section out altogether. Any parking lot expansion would require review. Okay. Correction. I mean, you know, I mean, if you have, they're talking about, well, we're talking about a percentage. You've got a very large parking lot, you know, 25%. That could be 20, 30 cars. Yeah. So. You're yeah. gonna get the number of parking stalls are eliminated altogether, then we see if we got any problems with having to review that. Do the minimum parking inside. So my recommendation, at least tonight, to start out would be to just take that out altogether. And Randy correctly put it on page nine, we've got a color issue. Nine two. two. Maximum from that's very close. Two of twelve, just strike off the parking thing. There was a, that was the uh, bright colors of primary colors shall be used only as accents occupying a maximum percent of building facades. The standards should not apply to murals or other works of public art. <coughs> it's not to have too intensive of a 10, 15 percent might be reasonable. 15? Oh, sorry. Up to 15? Yeah. Maximum of is what it says. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, you know, depending on the size of the building, it, you know, 15 percent be quite a bit. But. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know about that. <coughs> building. This would be more than that. Building. Pretty garish. Well, if you want to right. reduce it down here, but what did you say? Is 10 percent? I didn't hear that. 10 percent is our signage allowance. Signage. Okay. Signage. Yeah. You know, Let's go hope. with that. And and so think about it and we'll pick it up in the hearing. Which percentage? 10? 10. 15. 15. 15. 15. Okay. I need to go with this document. Yes. We discussed just one Certainly. point on page one of the 12 uh, on the design of your committee mm -hmm. composition. Uh, you know that all the person. <laughs> Shall be elected by a two thirds vote of the Common Council each April. Am I changing that to May unless there was a specific reason for April? It's just that that's when we have an organization meeting. No, you're correct. That'd be the yep. time to do it. Yep. Yeah, or, correct. or you can Thanks. say at the organizational meeting, so if it moves, it's not a problem. It's always no, it's by yeah. statute. By statute. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. yeah. You're correct. It's good. It's a good <coughs> point. Thank you. Also, uh, up on the top in the, those bold letters, it says Hudson. Guidelines that should be refined May 30th, 2007. And any of our, any of our references to the manual, to this booklet, should be referenced as uh, refined May 30th, 2007 date. Okay. Okay. Now, do we want to? We had some other ordinance changes that I talked about, the shared parking, the, uh, you want to talk about those before we go back and look at the resolutions and that was the one page. Uh, again, the creation of the overlay district was first, we just went over the points. Uh, the second one was uh, suspending yeah, the delete to four area ratio for the B3 central business district. Your stuff here. Basically the current four area ratio is four to one, which doesn't create a create a problem for because you have if you have a twenty thousand square foot lot, you're gonna have eighty thousand square feet of floor area, so you have to cover the whole lot for four floors. Um, suspending that really doesn't become problematic. Uh, the issue would be is if in in future in some other part of downtown you wanted to go over the 40, current forty five foot limit that wouldn't be in the riverway, then that's a possibility. Of where that 
you know, that issue may, but as long as we're at 45 feet, probably no higher than four floors, that issue wouldn't become problematic under the current ordinance. Right. Correct. But so I don't see a, you know, a problem with suspending it. So we'll scratch it. Again, I would, well, I'd go to the public hearing, but I mean, okay. if you want to go to the public hearing on these, these are recommendations out of this booklet. So I'm trying to get to those yeah. so we address them. But those, these will be changes to the zoning ordinance, not, not part of the overlay district. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by suspend versus or delete? delete. Well, it's I deleting mean, it out. Thing. So same, same thing, thing. correct. Yeah. When you say that, Denny, I, I see that you guys all know where I live, that you got that right up to the alley by my house of the downtown business district. You got it, the, the old library. Uh, Jen Osborne's house are included in that, and then you've that, got it going up yeah, the street. That, Why that, is that there, may I ask? Well, that property would have before, it had to be zoned in the central business district. This overlay district only applies to the property so, zoned in the overlay district, so. So that doesn't apply here, then? It wouldn't apply unless it's rezoned. Thank you. Okay, then uh, the off-street parking. Uh, we talked about the shared parking standards, and so we're going to utilize the shared parking standards, and we got to amend the ordinance to the zoning ordinance to use that as a reference or standard for establishing off-street parking in the central business district. Otherwise, we're taking those individual uses and applying it towards uh, towards the overall development. This is an area that Mark has been quite emphatic yeah. about, and uh, I think rightly so. so. I would say that again, we should amend. That you know, again, exactly. you know, we would require an annual review. When we discussed that, you know, these, these these areas that would utilize the would be a mixed, and again, these are mixed use developments. These are not a single use development. If it's all retail, then the full retail parking applies. If it's all apartment house or residential use, then all the parking applications. Where this applies is a mixed use, where you're gonna have uses at various types of day demanding the parking. So this doesn't necessarily apply to every single building in downtown Hudson. This only applies towards the mixed use types of development. Uh, let me see if I understand that. I thought that the, the analysis was done because downtown is looked at as a gestalt one large entity, the parking analysis is done on what, how each of those buildings is being used during what times of the day and how the entire piece needed parking, not a particular building. Is that how you read it also? That, uh, lonely, I was, I was re gonna respond with regard to the parking to a, a point you raised previously first. The, the uh, use of shared parking criteria is a significant advantage in terms of reducing the raw number of straight zoned required parking is a significant incentive to engage with the incentive system which causes all of these things to come to bear. In other words, you need worry less about the incentives not being applied, somebody walking in the door and saying, I don't want to use any of those, I just want to build an ugly building. I, 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 no, wait, there are such advantages, financial advantages, to having, for instance, excess parking spaces countable, period. Now, with regard to what, what you asked, on a larger project, I think this may be what you were talking about, Denny. If the, if the project were brought forward and let's say a whole block was all condominiums, then there's really, it's very difficult to say, well, <clears throat> um, we can apply shared parking criteria. You, you can't. I mean, you're going to need a, a X a one and a half or one and a quarter or two, depends on the age group of using the, the, the residential uses you're going to have to provide that many spaces. In fact, under the shared parking criteria, the only one that never changes has to do with the residential uses. So, I, you know, Denny's right that in that way, but where you start to do what you said, a gestalt circumstance where you step back and look at essentially a block that provides 
residential uses and then some commercial uses. That's where the shared parking criteria can truly come to bear. You still need to provide the, number of part, the right number of parking spaces for people who are going to live there. Right. Well, where, where does the balance come in where you know that this is going to be all businesses, but until you know what businesses are in there, you can't figure out what hours of operation for the particular shared parking. So how do you step back and analyze that when uh, a development goes in, you just know there's going to be 15 new businesses, but you don't know what hours of operation. And you don't know which business it's going to be 20 years from now, yeah. for example. So I, doesn't that kind of shoot the shared parking theory? N not, it, well, no, because fortunately these things have been tried for a, a lot of years. Uh, these, these documents are not released easily and lightly. They're, they're studied pretty hard. So there, there must be some analysis saying, these, in general, this is the kind of thing we see, so this is the kind of shared parking methodology we'll apply to 20 shops that we don't know what they will be. I mean, the dynamic would be um, we have residential, and then we have offices, and then we have uh, pr professional medical, and then we have two restaurants. Right. And all of a sudden, 20 years from now, nope, the whole block is turned into restaurants, and we don't have enough parking. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's nor not... That's not normally how it works. There's a, where one changed from one use to another, it was offset by another, which is a, a laid back way of explaining why the numbers work over time. Because so, what I heard from Danny makes a lot of sense in residential. And what my concern is if we apply this, if it's going to be all commercial, we apply the all commercial logic, then we end up with a big parking lot in front to the maximum number of commercial guests. So I was wondering where those two ideas come together. Well, the idea of the shared parking criteria is to, wait, let's back up. The normal parking criteria is to take every discrete use, figure out the maximum number of parking spaces that will be demanded of that on the peak use day right. of the year, and use that as the criteria that you require <coughs> of that use, and thus we get seas of asphalt. Mm -hmm. Or excess structured parking, which is vastly expensive. So the whole idea of the shared parking criteria is no one wants to be short on parking under an 80% use criteria. It's that last 5% that just <coughs> covers the earth with asphalt right. and, and that you can't count the overlap. In fact, you know, the spirit cellar is a perfect example where they're using parking spaces that are not being used at other times. You know, their peak time comes when the other uses aren't at peak. So uh, here it just says you wanted to just suspend the rule completely, but it sounded like you wanted to do something a little bit more than that. No, for mixed use developments, we want to be able to utilize the Urban Land Institute. Any other, any other single use will be utilize the standard parking. And it sounds like we'd lose some <coughs> of the advantages to that if we applied it to a commercial development, where if you just, uh, it just seems like we would, we need to apply it to the whole city. We'd end up, if it, if it ends up to be a, a building that's all businesses, we're still going for 100% and the last 20% are only used at peak times, depending on the mix. Well, if we're, we're going to start going to trying to apply this to blocks, we could possibly do that, but, uh, I think more thought needs to go into it. I'd, I'd like to get the application in today or <coughs> moving it towards public hearing. If we got a new development, some mixed use development, we apply those standards. Next six months or 12 months, we can work towards trying to refine, uh, refine the standards for the rest of downtown and how that may apply or utilize some of the considerations of mixed use. I'm, I'm in favor of doing that, but okay. I'm not, you know, to say that we're gonna go in and try to analyze every block downtown shortly and, and start applying. Uh, but actually, the next one is giving a, a exemption on the first 6,000 square feet that addresses a lot of yeah. locations downtown that don't have an opportunity to apply mm -hmm. to construct <coughs> off-street parking for themselves. Which happens, by the way, to dovetail with the idea at least of, well, block one and two that we're talking about and three and four mm -hmm. uh, um, that we're proposed to have a core parking, structured parking potential that ideally would have 
some excess right. afforded by financial mechanisms heretofore yet to be laid in place. But I if that is possible, then that very, th we are talking about the very mechanism by which the 6,000 square feet exemption is provided. Okay. Uh, and, and I think a little bit more discussion and work and refinement needs to be made on that formula. That, by the way, Denny, I, you, you know, I've both talked about that there is, there is s specific adaptation work to be done on, for example, the thresholds of uh, participation, should funding be available, of uh, in the incentive system of, for instance, one building that might have an addition that would include uh, either a, a very expensive architecturally interesting detail or something that is less costly. How do you, how do you, uh, put the incentives in place to allow that to occur. There is some work to be done between now and perhaps the adoption that will take care of some of these issues. Let's move with Denny's uh, suggestion and mm -hmm. get finite uh, after that. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's take baby steps before we take giant leaps here. Right. I do have, have, have the influence on the other. I do have one question for you. You, at, you, you made some reference that, you know, and I'm thinking of the northerly de potential development that maybe there'll be some extra parking spots. And if that were the case and it was, ca say, call it private residences, man, I wouldn't want my parking lot open to everybody else if I lived there. And I'm curious, how do you, how do you do that? Um, Just a curiosity question. No, I, I, it's a very good question. Assigned and parking. There's a building Assigned parking means nothing for when the you're underground the and there's nobody there enforcing it. For the residents, I mean. One at a time. Excuse me. <laughs> These, well, you've been in buildings where there are reserved parking. Yes, I have. That's a quick answer to, to how it's resolved. Okay. Well, the Perhaps compatibility of that particular suggestion may be in question. Well, I just had to ask, so. It's a good one. Thank you. What's next, Denny? Do we need to mo move on these? Or uh, yeah, well, yeah, there's three considerations. One is the resolution. Uh, and Catherine, I, do we want to split that into two resolutions, one by the Planning Commission, yeah. one by the Common Council? Yeah, I think so. And then, uh, then there would be the uh, moving, uh, accepting the recommendations on the downtown overlay district and moving that towards public hearing, which I would uh, suggest we set the public <coughs> hearing for J July 2nd, I believe. Uh, then also these changes on the zoning code that we just discussed, again, moving those uh, as recommendations and to the uh, and uh, public hearing. Again, these aren't adopting these. These are just moving them to public hearing. And then after the public hearing and discussions, then they could be adopted. But also in the interim, there may be something from the public or something from Mark or I that might, might change. tweak these a little bit, but I don't think they would be significant. What do we have to do then? Do we have Let's to make take a the first one for the planning commission? On the resolution. You need a resolution to approve? Yes. And this would be the adoption of the adoption of, of the manual. So and I make that motion to approve the adoption of the manual as one step? Is that how I, the first step? Right. Do. As presented and let's and get a second. Second. Okay. Now we can have some discussion if necessary. Everybody understand it? Is that this one here? Uh, it's no, the it's, it's, in the reference. Reference. it's in reference oh, to the book. Okay. The book. Yeah. Every, everyone got it? Correct. Excuse me? Uh, well, let's see if they're in concert before we take uh, secondary. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was just didn't know what you were talking about. We have a, we have a motion and a second. We're in discussion. Does that, everybody understand what the motion is? In planning commission? Yes. No. Does that mean that these are moved to public hearing? Not yet. Not yet. We're getting there. Is that what the motion is? No. no. The motion is in reference this to this one. book. Okay. The the guidelines. Got it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. 
Okay, council, again, we'll have to find out what the resolution number is, but. I'll move to adopt resolution, whichever. Yeah, Catherine's going to give gotta you advice here. No, move to suspend rules. I'll second the motion. There's a second one on the suspension? I'll second the motion. Okay. Now you can give us some guidance in our discussion. Well, you're going to make a motion to adopt, and we'll get a number for this resolution. So why don't you just read the adoption of downtown visioning and quality design plan policies and recommendations as recommended by the plan commission. With the, the next appropriate resolution number right. to be assigned. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, wait, we were on the suspension of the rules. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Now, we need a. I will move referring to uh, and incorporated here with uh, Captain's uh, title of this resolution. I'll second it's the motion. So <laughs> you second the motion? Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, just a clarification on a misspelling on my last name. Yeah, it should be visioning. We'll make that change. Any other comments? Oh, also the uh, refined, it should be uh, refined, that refined date should throughout the resolution be 530-2007. Right. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's carried. <laughs> The second one would be the uh, recommendation by the Planning Commission, and I guess this could probably uh, make two separate motions. Recommendation to the Common Council to, uh, as amended, uh, move the uh, proposed downtown overlay district to public hearing, which I recommend to be scheduled for Monday, July 2nd at 6.50 p.m. So moved. Second. second. This is planning. Planning. I'll second it since he's cold. <laughs> who, I'm who, did, who did the first one? Primary, okay. secondary. All right, we have a first and a second. Any discussion on this? I, I don't, Judy, had any comments from the audience? Are there comments from the audience on? Now we're on that one, Judy. Did you have a comment? And that's being moved to public hearing. Correct. Correct. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Who was voting? We were. Oh, aye. <laughs> it gets confusing. <laughs> we're going to have to sit the Somebody wants next to come take minutes and put the uh, planning commission on one side <laughs> and the other on the other side. Then the uh, uh, council, uh, <coughs> council would have to accept that recommendation and set the public hearing so we can get notices in the paper. Some rules. There's a second. Discussion? Yeah, I have a discussion. Here we're, um, the overlay district is ending at uh, one block past Vine. Uh, no, north, the energy center, but um, Nor Lake North is Lake. not. Is Elm, Elm Street. Elm Street, is that on the other side of Nor Lake, including Nor Lake? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. That, I was a little confused. Yeah, I, was, I saw we were a block map. off here. You yeah. couldn't read the street yeah. number. We'll get a bare map. No, that's, okay. that's okay. Any other comments or suggestions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. This is a little goofy up here. Yeah, this is like a minor. Okay, back to Planning Commission would be the recommendation of the other zoning ordinance modifications to go to public hearing again June or July 2nd, uh, 6.50. Yeah, that would be the uh, suspend and delete the four area ratio, amend uh, the off street parking requirements <laughs> to uh, allow the shared uh, parking standards and then also the 6,000 square foot exemption on off street parking. As we just discussed a few yeah, minutes ago. Planning not, is not adopting, it's recommending, recommending to, the public, to the public hearing. I just have one last question. Yeah. That, that treats everybody in the downtown business district equally? I mean, as, as correct. I mean, existing and everything yeah that, that these these standards would apply to everybody okay. now the one difference there is that under the shared use parking standard that only applies to mixed use development you, so no, right. you made that very clear yeah. i understand <laughs> did i get a second second it was uh, 
I know I didn't. Oh, I didn't do it. I asked a question. No, I don't think there was a. I don't think. No, there was, was no. Okay, motion. we need a motion. Somebody else. I did it two times. I'll move it. Move it to okay. here. We got a. Do we have a second? Planning. No planning. No second. Okay. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. The motion's carried. Same. So moved. Same with the council. Okay. Second. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. That take care of Well, that take care of about a third of our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more. That's item three. It's considering the request of uh, GCI builders to the city to dispose, sell, trade the city property west of River City Center, abutting First Street, uh, River City Partners. I, I, even though it's on the agenda, I would like to suggest that on June 4th we have a closed session we where we have our financial people there to give us some guidance and uh, have a closed session on that particular subject. It's only I, a suggestion. I would like to move to postpone for that reason plus the other reason that we received today as to um, just maybe you know, competition for the property. I don't know. I mean, how, and how can we sell something when they don't own it. I guess I have to ask that question. I mean, if they don't own that property yet, how can the city sell them when they don't own the rest of it? Am I, well, am yeah, I, I mean, out of line here? Or? There's a couple of three questions that should be handled with okay. some guidance from council, okay. guidance from financial. I'm not saying that uh, it's uh, something we aren't going to handle, but I think we should uh, get some guidance in a closed session. I, my other... My other request would be to, you know, they've given us some of the design elements here. I think that before we sell off a piece of property, we need to be in agreement that there's a benefit to the city in the but final development. We can determine those parameters uh, on June 4th. Okay. That's what I'm suggesting because there's a couple Is that of the date of the council meeting? Is that the... Yes, I'm, right. I'm sorry. And uh, GCI is here tonight. Can we give them courtesy at least? I mean, they came here tonight. Right. Can we give them courtesy to make some comments or? Oh, sure. Comment? Absolutely. Okay, Al? Regarding the property and stuff, it's kind of on this push this thing back and back and back. You know, I, what I'd like to do is, is see if it's an approval to accept the land contingent upon financial cost of wormholes, you know, I think that'd be really helpful for us. Pat is the owner right here. He's been here at every meeting. You know, you talk about somebody selling the land and willing to sell the land. Uh, Pat, you want to talk about being approached by anybody to sell this or anything? Or? Sure. I, I read uh, the letter that was addressed to the council, and I have not received any written offer for um, this parcel other than what I've negotiated out with GCI. Um, I don't understand where that's coming from. Um, it's just simply not true. I, I haven't received that. So there is not a competitive bid situation right now for um, the purchase of the property. There certainly have been people interested in leasing, but um, I do not have any other offers. So I just want to make that clear to everyone. Thank you. What, what letter did you get? Look at your computer. Well, uh, Council, you have to make the decision. Uh, we've got about four days, but if you would uh, rather handle it uh, this evening, that's up to you. But we've uh, had two or three questions as, as it relates to uh, the sale of that property. And uh, I'd like to make a comment if I could. Uh, um, I understand very clearly your, your desire to show some continued indication of our willingness to deal with you, which we just did at, at our last council meeting. Well, that's why we brought it for the night. I asked Pat to give me a continuance by closing that to this evening because the financials are tied to the property. I got to go with or without the city property. And that's why I tried to come through to you guys 
by working with us on this property, we give you that staggering effect, and that's what we showed to you and tried to address to you here. We, we did not have to have that property. We did not need to use that property. We tried to do it to get the best look and the best establishment for the city. That's why we came back to you with this. And that's why I was really reluctant to even work with the city on that part of it with that thing so I could continue on and not using that property. And then if the city would go with it, I'd budge into that property. But at the last meeting, we said we're gonna vote upon this at this time to bring that there. So we've constructed that building and drawn it up and spent a lot of money to, to build in that property to give you the look that the city is looking for. I'm not here to shove it down your throat or anything. I've been working for months at, at end on this to work with you guys, you know, and, and that's where I thought we were. We by postponing this and pushing it off. We got 1031 stuff, or you know, there's a lot of things that are complicated in this. It's not just we're forcing this down. He's got obligations on funding, and he, we've been pushing them off and pushing them off. And we're willing to work with that. You know, we could do it on a contingency basis that your financial committee agrees to get rid of this and it, it's a workable deal you know agree with it about conduct contingency throw three four contingencies well nice. you got four days two of it's a weekend okay so if we made that decision on the fourth of june <laughs> which we will one way or the other yeah pat uh i'd i'd rather approach it that way unless the council has you guys have to make a decision but uh, i think that we should uh, cover every uh, I, I, I agree. I also, I think it would just be, really frankly, rather hollow. So we got two more days, Pat. If you, if you uh, separate the weekend, okay? But we will have a decision on the fourth for you. Is that okay? Cool. You know, Mark and I have talked about, you know, what's the benefit? You know, the benefit is you probably get a much better design project that the city can work. Getting at, you know, then getting land now. What we get in change for it, whether it's land at the intersection of Second Street or where we get off street parking, or whatever, um, <coughs> and, and those things could be discussed Monday night. I, I, you know, but it's project could change significantly if yeah. that land is not utilized. Well, that's true, but you have to take into consideration of the council the monetary uh, approach that they're taking, the effect on the building the financial aspects uh, acquainted with that uh, and whether or not we want to because once you give it away it's gone forever discuss that particular point uh, in council under uh, <coughs> closed session come out with a uh, decision uh, that evening and uh, we'll have it mark one one observation um from a design guideline standpoint and the application of the design guidelines, um, the land should be used for uh, as it is being shown here. It, to, to not allow the land to be used causes the building to become likely, causes the building to become more regular. The latitude of the site allows much more variety. I understand 100% what you're saying. This is the board of directors and the council that re represent the people that own that piece of land. And they have to take that into consideration. That's all. I've uh, been out of town for the last few, couple of days. What exactly is the issue? There is no issue now. Yeah. He addressed it. But we, they, we received a letter um, via email today. Uh, you have to read it. It's too hard to explain it to you, but please look at it when you go home. If, if you can wait till Monday, it'll be clear to you. All right, I'll That's you. one part of it. Only. I'll give it to you at the end of this meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. I will make a I beg, It's hard for me to vote on it. I mean, yeah. well, now you should wait anyway. Is this a planning commission no. voting item at this point? Um, unless the planning commission wants to make a recommendation to the council to consider, but I. Pretty apparent the council's going to wait till Monday night to make a decision. So, well, I'd like to reiterate the council has unanimously voiced very recently its desire to work with this builder, and I don't want them to the builder to or anyone else to misconstrue our desire to have a full hearing on this amongst ourselves right. on Monday as a reversal of that opinion of ours that we are willing to work with this builder. And uh, this is appropriate for closed session, not yes. morning yes. session. Yes. yes. Acquiring and disposing of right. property. So we'd have to wait till Monday to that. talk anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay? Give us two days, we'll give you two days. How's that? Total four. Is that okay with everyone? All right. Do we have to make any uh, motion or anything? We'll put it on a closed session for uh, June 4th uh, council meeting. Did you have a question? Anybody else have any comments? Yes. This is July what? July 2nd. Oh, July 2nd. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Other business for information purposes only? Let's pick that up. Are we doing TEF? Are we doing TEF? And a motion to adjourn. In a double motion. Are we doing TEF tonight? Are we doing TEF tonight? We've overlooked TEF? Or are we letting that go? What's that? The tax increment? Yeah. That's, that's on the agenda. Well, it's on the agenda. That's, Let it go? We'll, that was we'll, only... We'll uh, deal with that. But most likely we won't be able to set up the tax increment district to 2008. So. Yeah, it's parsley. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a, it's been on the agenda as part of this discussion ongoing. It just it was retained in case you if you want to discuss it. No, we no, can, no, no, no. I don't have specific. I, I made a motion. I second. Is this for the planning, planning commission? commission? All right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved for the council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. <clears throat> Thank you for everything.